Hello. In this video, we are going to define the impulse function as well as the relationship between the impulse function and the sync function, the sync um, signal. So, number one, in terms of a definition, the impulse function or the delta function, the Dirac delta function in continuous time is defined as well, this is a loose definition, as a signal that it is zero at every point, so zero for any t different from zero. And it is technically undefined at t equals zero. t equals zero, you have an impulse. You can think of it, loosely speaking, as if this was plus infinity meaning we have a function that if this is time, it is zero everywhere. So this is zero, 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 zero everywhere for every t that is different from zero. And then it has an impulsive nature at t equals zero. Technically it's undefined. What is defined is that the integral, meaning the area of the impulse function, I'm going to say here from minus infinity to infinity, but vt is equal to one, which we denote as in this arrow, one in parentheses. Technically the impulse function, I'm not going to go over the technicalities, it is not a function per se, it is a distribution, it is a generalized function. Um, but if you integrate it, you, or you can think of it as, this is the definition, it's a function that is zero everywhere, it is impulsive at t equals zero, and the area under that curve is equal to one. Think of it as a definition. Okay. You can also think that since this is zero everywhere here, when you are adding this integral, really that's adding just zero. So in reality, the integral of zero minus an epsilon, small epsilon here, and zero plus an epsilon of delta of t, vt is equal to one, okay? So as long as you catch the impulse, the area is one. Okay, so with that, we can define also the impulse function as a limit. And this is what we have here, the delta function. And there are a few limit definitions of the delta function. One of them that is useful in, in digital signal processing is that this is the limit of sine of a t divided by pi t as a approaches infinity. Okay, so if we were to, to look at the function and compute the integral, this is a function that the integral, the area is one and that it behaves like that. Think, in terms of a graphical interpretation, we can think that the numerator here is a sine function. And so this is our numerator. And the denominator as a function of t, this is just a line, right? With the slope pi. Now, if you divide one over the other, notice that there is a singularity or a definition, you are going to have a zero over zero division. You will need to use L'Hopital rule for that. Looks something like this. This is the sync function. So you can see as, as t goes up, the oscillators of, oscillations of the sine function become smaller and smaller. This is what we see here. 
right? As, meaning as we have a sign, we have the same oscillations as T goes up, these oscillations become smaller and smaller, right? Turn to zero. Okay. Now, if we make the, this is equivalent to A is the frequency of the sine function greater and greater, right? We are collapsing it in the limit at zero. Okay, so you can think of another one here will be where you have a sign but has a higher frequency. Will be more like this. In the limit, you get something that is impulsive. Now, the reason why I provide this definition, as you can imagine, is that later in some derivations that are fundamental derivations in digital signal processing, it is useful. Okay? There are other definitions of the delta, the Dirac delta function in terms of limits. Now, one more point. Over here, technically, you could say you have the delta function is zero everywhere except at t equals zero, and the area under the curve is equal to one, and at t equals zero, Technically, it is undefined. You can think of something that turns to infinity, positive is infinity, but more properly, it is that it's undefined. Now, you go and you try to analyze this in real analysis, in calculus. These functions technically do not exist. They are mathematical operators that were constructed. Dirac actually constructed this to deal with some fundamental physics problems. They are very important in physics and in engineering, and they are very important, especially to deal with discontinuities. Okay? So, in a sense, what they do is that you pick your, your calculus, and you add these functions like the <coughs> impulse signal, the step signal, and some relationships between them, and you are creating an operational calculus that adds on some tools to the real analysis calculus that you are used to that are useful for engineering and physics, especially. So think of these as generalized functions. There is a proper mathematical theory to work with them, where they are defined as measures or distributions. But for now, and for the purpose of this course, you can just work with this definition. An impulse is a signal that is zero everywhere except at a point. And the way you tame that undefinition or that infinity is by integrating it that gives you a finite number. So, with that, we're going to do some examples now and develop some properties of the impulse function, which is going to appear a lot throughout continuous time signal analysis. And it's also the way that we are going to extend the continuous time Fourier transform, not only to work with infinite length or finite length aperiodic signals, but also to be able to work with periodic signals for which we already have the continuous time Fourier series, but if you have the impulse functions, then we will see that with the continuous time Fourier transform, we can analyze the spectrum of absolutely all continuous time signals, and that's quite useful. And we will see the relationship between the continuous time Fourier transform and the discrete time Fourier transform. Sorry, we will see that, but also the continuous time Fourier transform and the continuous time Fourier series that we already covered. Thank you.